Hello screenwriters, welcome back to another episode of Watch Me Write, where every week I write five pages for my first screenplay, then I discuss the previous five pages. This week we're going to talk about pages 106 to 110. Before we get started, I just want to say, oh, it is so, so beautiful out right now. You know, um, I'm recording this video a little later than usual, so as a result, the sun is out even more. For those who don't know, I live in California. And the weather in California, I'm telling you, it is so amazing. I used to live on the East Coast, we're in New York. And uh, yeah, I missed the winter times in New York, but the summer times wasn't no joke. Summer in California, oh my God, it's the best. So if you live in California, you know what I mean? So yeah, anyway, let's get started. Last week, we left y'all where Lawrence um, pulled out a gun on Rick. In these new pages, we see Lawrence actually shoot Rick. Rick dies, and the scene ends, and we jump straight into Lawrence in front of Alonzo's workplace. Lawrence is out for blood. We just saw him shoot Rick, and now he's talking to Alonzo. So they start walking, casually talking, and then uh, Lawrence basically brings up the fact that how Damon and Alonzo were very close. Lawrence always had a jealousy, envious uh, type of relationship because uh, he hated the fact that Damon always protected Alonzo. Even when in his eyes that Alonzo betrayed Damon, Damon always said, do not touch Alonzo. With that being said, Lawrence tells Alonzo, look, if I find out you had anything to do with Damon's murder, I'm going to kill you myself. Lawrence leaves Alonzo with that threat. He walks away to meet his friends across the street. We know Alonzo's a tough guy. For the first time, we see the fear in Alonzo's face. And the scene ends. After that scene, we jump straight into Kafala's house. He's at the kitchen table. He has a bowl of cereal in front of him. Kafala is disengaged with his surroundings. He's very depressed. So now, if you remember in the beginning, uh, Kafala loved cereal, right? So he would devour any type of bowl of cereal that was in front of him. This was to show a bit of change in his character. And then Pops just like observing, not knowing what to do. And we end the scene. After that moment in the kitchen where Kafala was depressed, he goes to visit that storefront with the Felice sign. If you remember early on in the story, he was in the same storefront with Sherry. He was explaining to her how he wants to lease this storefront and start his own business, the computer repair business. He was very happy. So this was kind of like to contrast, kind of like a callback how things were for this character in the beginning to the moment where he is right now. He's depressed. He's looking at that Felice sign. He's basically his um, future. He sees it fading away. There's a bum there looking at him. If you remember earlier in the beginning, as a matter of fact, I think the first pages of the story where Kafala made a nice gesture for this bum. You know, he went inside this pizza store. He bought this bum some food and the bum was very happy. The bum probably don't remember this moment. The bum is looking at Kafella, just staring at him. He's thinking to himself, wow, this kid looks very sad. So this was a pivotal moment to show how things have shifted for this character. We jump straight into Pops at work. He has Kafella on his mind. He's thinking about that moment earlier in the kitchen where Kafella was just sitting in front of the cereal and depressed. At that moment, Pops wasn't sure what to do. And Pops, in his mind, felt that he missed an opportunity to uh, comfort his son. While Pops is at work, he tells the co-worker if he could cover for him. And the co-worker is inquiring, like, what's going on? Pops simply tells the co-worker, look, I need to go be with my son. Now, a lot is happening, right? Things are moving fast. We see a raid. Chris is being arrested with a whole bunch of other people. It's a drug raid. They bring Chris to the police station along with Cedric. Now, Chris is being booked, and they put Cedric in the cell. We go to Detective Wallace where he's on the phone. A co-worker comes to Detective Wallace and tells him that, look, uh, this uh, drug addict wants to talk to you. Detective Wallace hangs up the phone and goes to the cell to meet Cedric. Cedric starts to tell Detective Wallace he knows who killed Damon. Okay, spoiler alert. This is the moment we find out who killed Damon. If you don't want to know who killed Damon, I suggest you skip ahead. Wallace walks up to the cell with Cedric and Cedric starts screaming out, the boy worth dying for. He did it. The boy worth dying for. And then Wallace starts wondering, what is this guy talking about? And then he said his nephew, the boy for dying for. If you remember, there was a moment where it was a little hint where I showed that Cedric was Kefala's nephew. And then if you also remember, right after Damon was murdered, Cedric was on the scene. He was screaming out the boy worth dying for. Okay. I was adding hints throughout early on in the beginning of the story where we saw baby pictures of Kefala. We saw the meaning of his name. Kefala, uh, his name translates to worth dying for in Nairobi, which is a country in Africa. His mother named him that because she knew if she gave birth to him that she would um, not make it, she would die. So she named him Kefala, worth dying for. So this is how Cedric knows that the meaning of his name because Cedric was Kefala's mother's brother. Okay, I know there's a lot going on. So we jump back to Wallace 
And now he starts remembering a moment at the burger joint where he was eating with Kefella. Now, if you know that Wallace has a hobby where we saw a book on his desk early on where he studies different names from different cultures. So Wallace knows the meaning of Kefella's name. He said it to him while they were eating at that burger joint. He told Kefella that your name, it means worth dying for. Kefella was very impressed that Wallace knew this. So during this moment in flashback, Wallace starts to put two and two together. He realized that, oh, this is what Cedric means. The boy worth dying for, Kefella. He was there at the murder scene. He's the one that killed Damon. Wallace just shocked, just stands there, and the scene ends. But right after that moment of Wallace realizing Kefella was the one that murdered Damon, we jump straight into Kefella at home. He's uh, fixing an old computer part. His cell phone is next to him. He's standing at the cell phone, hoping and waiting for a call from Sherry. That is it for pages 106 through 110. Next up, we're pages 111 through 115. Let me know in the comments if you knew all along that Kefella was the one that murdered Damon or if you thought someone else did. I hope I did a good job to kind of like make this uh, a mystery where you didn't know easily who did it. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. If you think about writing your first screenplay, go to your favorite app store, download Start Word, fade out.